Hello everybody, today I'm going to be showing you how to transform your game from looking like this to looking like mine, along with going over my config settings. Some of you may be asking yourselves why I'd bother making a video like this when so many people have already done videos on it, and the simple answer is someone asked me to in the comments of a previous video, and much like Serena, I am for the people. But why use reshade for filters? Nvidia also has game filters, but not only is Reshade more accessible for those without Nvidia GPUs, it also has tons more options that you can personally opt in or out of at any time. And for those that still aren't convinced, Nvidia has recently dropped a new app that will eventually replace the GeForce experience, and by the looks of things, the filters are much more restrictive and less flexible than what they have now. So I'd say there's never been a better opportunity to make the switch before they force everybody to upgrade. With all that boring stuff out of the way, let's get on with installing Reshade. Alright, so now we're going to move on to actually installing Reshade along with getting my preset. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to Reshade's website. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go to reshade.me. All of the websites I go to will be linked in the description by the way if you prefer that. So once we're here, you'll see there's a nice purple download button here. You just want to go ahead and click that. I will say that I'd recommend that you make a folder to put everything we download in this video, but ultimately that's up to you. Okay, so once you've downloaded the Reshade installer, you want to get my preset. So for that, we're going to be going to my link tree. So you just want to come back up here again and you want to go to guns.lol slash zf. It'll take a second to load. It might have to do a DDoS protection thing. And then you'll be greeted with this page here. Click to enter. So you want to go ahead and do that. And once you're here, there'll be some music playing. So you can just click this little speaker icon here and that will mute that. I've already muted the tab just so it doesn't interfere with the recording. Cool, so once you're here, you'll see that there's a bunch of my social media links, but then there's also this little globe. That's what you're gonna wanna click. So just hover over this in the middle. So you just wanna do that and then click. So inside of this is FDBD stuff folder. There's two subfolders. We've got config here and we've got reshade. For the purposes of this tutorial at the moment, we're going to focus on the reshade. We'll come back to config later. So, open that up and you'll see there's two files inside of here. You're going to have azefsettings.ini and you're going to have reshadeinstructions.txt. You're just going to want the azefsettings.ini file, that's all you're going to need. Alright, so now that we've got reshade and my filter downloaded, we're going to want to install reshade. So. I'm just going to type in reshade here because I know that it will bring up my installer and I'm just going to double click on that. Cool. Now don't be alarmed if you have a more modern version of reshade. I think they're on like 6.0 or something like that now. It shouldn't make a difference. Um, if you do run into issues with your reshade, there's also been some DBD performance issues at the moment. Apparently a bunch of people have been crashing in the blood moon event, so it might not even be this if you are having that issue, but feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to help you. I had a friend who had a bunch of issues when he just installed Reshade, so um, I'm more than happy to try and assist you. But for 90% of people, you're gonna be completely fine. I've never had a single even like tickle of an issue, so. So once you've got Reshade open, it'll do a bit of a search for programs on your computer, which will just be like a bunch of games you have installed. I know my games collection is so sick and awesome and based. Uh, but you're going to want to look for Dead by Daylight. Now, I mean, it kind of depends what version of DVD you have. But for my sake, I'm going to ignore the EGS one. That's just Epic Games. And I'm going to get the Win64 shipping one, which is Steam. So I'm going to click on that. Also, if it doesn't show up here, you can browse and you can find your Dead by Daylight directory. Uh, so you'd open up Steam. You'd go to your Dead by Daylight. You'd right click. You'd go Properties. And you'd go Installed Files. And you'd click Browse. And that should open up a folder directory and you just want to click up here, grab that and then you'd copy that. You'd go browse on reshade like this and then you just go like that. Uh, you just paste it for whatever reason it didn't paste, but you get the idea. In my case, I'm just going to click here and I'm going to go next. Now, if you've selected it normally, like in the list from the last step, it should automatically select this for you. But if not, you're going to want Microsoft Direct X 10, 11, 12, and then you're going to want to hit next. I'm going to click modify because that's going to take me through the steps of regular installation. So here we go. So it should bring up this thing here, select preset to install. This is where you're going to want to grab the .ini file that I gave to you earlier, and you're going to want to put this in. Okay, so you'd want to click browse here, and you'd want to navigate to wherever that has been installed. There we go. 
So in my case, I've got it in my actual Dead by Daylight folder here. So I've got Dead by Daylight and then it's in binaries Win64. And this is where your reshade stuff will install to. So if you want to bring your settings preset into here, that's fine. I don't think it actually matters. You can just navigate to wherever you saved it, but it's up to you. And then you'd want to select my ZEF settings.ini file, like so. And then you'd want to hit next. So this will have automatically checked all of the necessary packages to install for reshade. But at any time, as you see in this video, you can just go back to the installer and click modify and you can add effects if you ever decide that you want to add or remove stuff. So don't worry about that. It's literally the easiest thing in the world to do. It doesn't really matter that much. You don't have to give this much thought at all. So once you've done that, then of course you'd hit next and it will download all of the effects. And it should say successfully installed reshade, click the finish button to exit the setup tool and then you're good to go. So now I'll move on to actually showing you how it works in game. Okay, so when you boot up Dead by Daylight, you should have some little pop up here like this and it'll say to press home to activate it. You just want to press the home key here and then this will bring up your reshade menu. So yours should look exactly like this with these settings. Now, there's a couple of things I'm going to go over because there's some things you might not like and you might want to change. But for that, I'm going to get into like an actual game, I think. Okay, so this is what the filter looks like in game. Uh, but there's some things that you might want to change. So I'm just going to go over them quickly. So if we bring up the menu here. Uh, so first of all, everything has a slight blue tint to it. And that is because of, if we just get to it, that is because of the CPFX thing here, the tint CPFX. I'll just bring that down. You can see the difference it makes, right? I just like when everything has like a slight cold tint to it. But if you don't like that, you can just uncheck the CPFX there. Super easy. And don't worry about me changing the number here. Um, I'm just going to... I don't have autosave on, so I'll just revert it. Uh, the other thing here is the HSL shift. So this is a recent addition. Um, so in between my Huntress video and the video that came before it, um, the Huntress video had this, uh, the one before it did not. Basically what I've done here is I've boosted the saturations of the reds and I've also made their hue slightly pink. It still looks quite red in the sky here, but in other things you'll notice like the locker that's got a slight pink hue to it. So if that's not your thing or you want my filter settings from before, uh, from like the Sable video and prior, then you just want to uncheck the HSL shift as well. So those are really the only two things that you might want to mess with. But yeah, that's really it for this portion. So I'm going to move on to the config part of the video now. All right, so now we're going to be downloading my config files. So for that, you're going to want to go back to my link tree if you were watching the reshade portion of this video. If not, you're going to want to come up here and go to guns.lol slash asf. And there might be a little Cloudflare DDoS protection thing. Don't worry about that. You might have to click a little checkbox. But yeah, once that's done, you'll say click to enter. Just do that. Some music will be playing. So you might want to click this little speaker up here and mute it. If you don't like bangers, I'm going to do it for the sake of this video because I don't want to interfere with my voice. You'll see there's a bunch of social media links and then there's a little globe. You're going to want to hover over the middle of the globe and click that. You're going to see two folders here. You're going to want to ignore the reshade folder and go into config. Okay, so inside of config, you'll see that there's some subfolders. Uh, the reason I've done it this way is because both files and then the exact same thing um, so you'll see here we've got config fancy and config more optimized along with an engine.ini file now regardless you're going to want this engine.ini file so you might as well download that and then as for what config you want that kind of depends on you so essentially i was using this one right here but i recently made the switch over to this when sable came out because my old config here has terrible looking hair. I mean, it kind of depends on who you're playing. Most people it's unnoticeable, but if you care about that kind of thing, you're going to want this one. The only real difference is this has some of the graphics options turned up to normal, whereas this one has everything super optimized. 
Uh, so if you go into either folder, you'll see they're both game user settings.ini. If you're really struggling with performance, I recommend this one. If you're just kind of doing it, you want a little bit of an advantage, but you still want your game to look decent, then I'd recommend getting the fancy one. Either way, you're going to want to get one of them along with this engine.ini file. So now we're going to install my config files. So for that, you're going to want to go to your search bar down here and you're going to want to type in percentage local app data percentage and then you're just going to want to click on this folder icon here okay so this will bring you to your local app data folder and you're going to want to look for your dead by daylight which is right here for me and then you're going to want to go to saved config and you're going to want windows client now i've got a bunch of stuff in here it used to just be windows no editor but they've changed it. <laughs> so they changed it over to Windows Client for Steam and then EGS is for Epic Games. Uh, I don't know why there's also a Windows one, but you can ignore that. And you'll see that I've also got game user settings out here. That is just a backup, so you can ignore that. So we're gonna wanna go in here to Windows Client. And this is where you're gonna wanna put the files that you downloaded in the previous step. We're gonna be replacing game user settings and also engine what i would recommend doing is making a backup of these and if you want to do it how you saw that i just had one if you want to do it how i did it in the, the previous little part there you can do that so all i would do in that case is right click on it copy it and then i'd go back out to like here for example and i just paste it and then it's still in your directory but it's not actually going to be used by the game or in here which is where i had mine and you can do it that way so I've already got them in here. I'm not going to replace them because they are literally my config files. Uh, we'll go over a couple things though. So for the engine one, that's perfect as it is, but you will want to make sure that when you right click on it and go to properties that's set to read only, I think something about copying it over to another computer erases that. So you're just going to want to make sure that's set. What that does basically is make it so Dead by Daylight, the game can't actually alter the config file. So they can only ever look at the file, they can't edit it. And you shouldn't need to change anything in this. All I've got down here, a credit to Hens for this. I got this stuff from him, I'm fairly certain. This stuff here and maybe, I think it's just this stuff here. Um, now the game user settings, you might want to make some edits regardless, just based on what your resolution is and what the hertz of your monitor are. So I'm going to go over that quickly. So I will say that before you do this, if you have just changed the properties to read only, you're going to want to uncheck that because it won't let you save. It'll make you save a copy of it. Um, just make sure Dead by Daylight isn't open when you do this. So we're going to click on here. Now, dependent upon what config version you have, there might be a bunch of zeros here instead. So don't worry about that. Uh, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to scroll down here. So firstly, if you have a monitor that has Hertz less than 120, you're going to want to change this number here. And there's also another number that you're going to want to change. So you're going to want to change this as well. Um, if you have any monitor 120 Hertz or above, and you have a decent computer, you can ignore that. 120 is um, Dead by Daylight's max FPS. I just had a friend with a 60 Hertz monitor. Yes, I know 60 Hertz for gaming is cringe, but you know, you've got what you've got, right? Uh, I'm just mentioning it in case somebody here does have a lower hertz monitor. There's really no point running your game at that FPS if you don't have at least 120 hertz. So now the other thing is I have a 2K monitor that I play the game on. If you have a lower resolution or a higher resolution, you're going to want to change that stuff. Oh, there's also a frame rate limit here. So there's three. <laughs> Um, so you're going to want to change all of those if you do that. Uh, you're going to want to change two sets of resolution settings. So it's the desired screen width here. So this is set to 2K. If you've got a 1080p monitor, you'd want that to be 1920 by 1080. Um, and the same ones here. You'd want those to be 1920 by 1080. And here as well. So you'd want to change all of those. And if you've got a higher resolution than 2K, then you'd want to change that here as well. And then once you've changed those things, you can leave everything else as they are. A video I watched that helped me get a better understanding of DVD's config files. I've watched a lot of videos about over the years and made little tweaks, so I'm not going to credit everything, but I will try and track down that video. I don't remember who made it, but I'll have it linked in the description. Your volume setting will probably be different to mine. So that's main volume right here. I should have mentioned that before. Main volume. I've got that set to 10. 
you're just going to want to check whatever number you have it set to in game and you're just going to want to change it to that yeah maybe controller sensitivity if you play on controller i've just got this stuff basically default i have my survivor sensitivity slightly down because i play on 2800 dpi yeah so you might want to change that stuff as well i should mention that just in case so that's all once you're done you're going to want to hit file save and then close out of that and then right click on this go to properties and you're going to want to set that to read only and apply so once again, they'll just make it so the game can't actually tinker with your settings at all. If you want to change your settings in game, they won't change. But yeah, that's pretty much it. If you've enjoyed this video, uh, feel free to leave a like and comment. I would really appreciate it. It would help this video get seen by more people. And yeah, that's pretty much it, everybody. Have a good one. Hey fellas, this is Editor Azef here. Just stopping at the end of the video to quickly say that if you're watching this video and you were hoping for a regular Survivor video this week, I've got great news for you. I uploaded a video a while ago that pulled like 40 views. So if you're watching this, you probably haven't seen that. So I'm going to make that the video linked in this outro. So go ahead and watch that. It's like you're getting two videos this week for the price of one. I know, fucking crazy.